Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement with having. When I record my audio cast, it's done in a lot of different settings because I'm a traveler. I'm a person who is technically at this present moment homeless. I'm homeless due to basically someone committing fraud on my life in a lot of ways. Interfering with my privacy rights, interfering with my medical rights, interfering with my legal rights and my banking rights and my financial rights and my legacy rights with regard to, well, life insurance policies and whatnot. The truth is that in life that when a person goes to a downturn in their personal situation in terms of the loss of a spouse or loss of a significant other, that performance can be impeded and impacted in terms of the work that we do, the employment that we have, or the ways that we do things in the world. In my life, I've also experienced cybercrime, constant actual harassment and hacking across about six state lines, especially when I was traveling with my fully paid for business vehicle, which unfortunately some stupid female officer in Indianapolis took from me, impounded, and then basically it just became ridiculous. The cost of that vehicle to remove it from the impound was more than the actual value of the vehicle. It really upset me because I didn't feel like that was right. I'm looking for my driver's license, not at all. I'm looking for my license plates. My license plates were in my bags, along with a whole bunch of things that were about my legal and financial life. Unfortunately, when I got uh, put in jail for something that was not really my fault, but it was a challenge to handle in the three to six months that I was allowed, allegedly, to do it, what I could tell, what I could observe with my journalistic skills is that law enforcement impeded me the whole way through that situation to force me into jail. I also knew the morning that I got on the bus after I walked to the bus stop to get on the bus to go into that court date that I was told ahead of, in advance that I would not be going out after that situation. The Lord told me, they'll be going to keep you in jail. They've already decided, even though you've not even had your court hearing yet. So that's the way it goes with people who are illegal and immoral. And there are court people who run courts, who are judges, who do things immoral and illegal because of their constant opinions of God, as opposed to the actual international treaties that the American state, um, sorry, the American country has the right to enforce. People don't recall that medical rights are a part of the American treaty called the Inter International Human Rights Declaration that is a part of the United Nations. And something that you'll find if you're an educated person like me or a researcher like me or just an analytical person like me is if you look it up, what you see very clearly on international law is that all treaties actually are trumping, using that word, any type of federal law and any type of state law and any type of local law and certainly any type of human opinion. What I mean is that there's a marvelous line on an international law website that communicates that the states must follow the treaties. So when we're talking about medical rights, when we're talking about privacy rights, when we're talking about technology rights, all those things in that treaty impact human life for us, each of us citizens of every one of the 400 nations that basically signed that treaty.